us in Jesus name. I speak on a subject called give me your heart. Somebody say give me your heart. Now that is what the Lord is saying. Uh, let help us Proverbs 23 verse number 6. Want to go? My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my way. That's what the Lord is asking you, sir. He's asking you, ma, to give him your heart. Praise the Lord. Even as I'm speaking right now, there is tendency, the devil will want to shift your heart. Shift it to somewhere else. You know, in Jeremiah 23, verse number 12, he said, you will seek me and you will find me. He said, when you seek me with the whole of your heart. Many of us, we are seeking him. We are not finding him. The reason is just because we are not seeking him with the whole of our heart. The heart is the organ that pumps and circulates oxygen around the body. I hope you know that. And we need it to function. The food you eat, they are converted to energy that you need because of the oxygen that is circulated around us. So, summarily, that heart is like the center of our body, the center of our circulatory system. And once the heart has a problem, you have a problem. Praise the Lord. In fact, your physical body is as good as your heart is. Hallelujah. So, but do you know that this heart that we are talking about is so interesting the part of the body that you can make up hallelujah you can make up your face where i eat so your feet looks different you know you may see some people oh, or it's their birthday or it's their wedding ceremony and you don't recognize them again i say oh where is that lady and discover that she has been made over <laughs> amen she has been transformed she has been changed because of the makeup on the physical but do you know our god he doesn't look at the physical where does he look at he doesn't look at that thing on the outside. Where does he look at? The real person. The real person that is under. The real person that you have kept in. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse number 7. In fact, many of us are deceived. I may look at you now. Oh, beautiful woman. Oh, wonderful brother. But is your heart good? Ask your neighbor. Say, is your heart correct? Ask, ask your neighbor again. Say, is your heart correct? He may be a smooth talking dude. He can speak very well. And the heart is corrupt. You can see that beautiful sister with a nice beret, proper church lingo, but he has a stinky heart. But the word of God says, Our God does not look at that appearance. Where does he look at? Our heart. And many times that is where we, that's where many times we ignore. Hallelujah. Listen, so if you do everything well in the physical, you dress very well, you match it, your sneaker plus your jeans plus what you are wearing, everything is to match, looking well and you are ready for, for the picture. And if your heart is not in place, that means your service to God is still lopsided. You can give him your money, bring your money to God and if your heart is not right, your sacrifice is still not acceptable. Somebody say it again, say, Lord, help my heart. I'm not hearing you say, Lord, help my heart. Say it one more time, Lord, help my heart. Don't forget, God knows your heart. You can deceive the pastor. You can deceive a friend. You can deceive somebody else, but he knows your heart. Oh, you can be very respectful to the pastor and greet him very well in church, and you don't submit to your husband. Oh, you don't love your wife. He sees your heart. Hallelujah. During the week, you start abusing people or picking up fights. He sees your heart. It is not only what you present or bring to church on Sunday. He sees your heart. You as you are sitting down now, you do not know what your heart is capable of doing. Only one person knows is God. That's why David cried to the Lord. He said, search my heart and know if there's any wicked way in me. He said, lead me to the way, what? Everlasting. Lead me to the way everlasting if there is any wicked way in me. Jeremiah 17, let's read it, verse number 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Not even yourself. Now, you yourself, you don't know. That's why you need help. Every one of us sitting down here today, we need God to help our hearts. Help our hearts to stay focused. You are telling God, oh God, test me with millions. You just tell me with millions of dollars and see what I can do for the kingdom. God is saying, keep quiet, my friend. Oh, I have principles. Oh, I can do this. You are not in the place of honor yet. 
Oh, I cannot be deceived by lady. No ladies can bring me. The, how many of them do you have around yet? How many have cornered you alone naked? You check how our hearts are going these days. God, now the days that people are very passionate about God. Passionate about church. Passionate. They're always talking about their church. Always talking. During the week, looking for somebody to invite. Looking for somebody to evangelize. Looking. But our heart is gradually shifted. Look at what mobile phone has done to our hearts. Even in the presence of God in church. Look at what has happened to our heart. The enemy is gradually shifting our heart away from God. Not making our heart to be stayed on God. Will Peter ever say, you tell me, will Peter ever say that one day will be one day and we will deny Jesus? Now answer me, my friend. Will he ever say that? Jesus was even telling me, he said, oh God, I don't like what you are saying. No, I said, I won't deny you. He did it first time. Did it second time. Did it third Somebody say, Lord, help me. Oh, say, it. say, Lord, help me. You can walk on water with Jesus and still deny him. Peter that said, ah, we will die here. We will be with you forever. He took a sword, caught the hair of somebody. He was the one, immediately Jesus left. He said, I go out fishing. Other people followed him. Where is your heart, my brother? Check your heart when you first gave your life to Christ. How is your heart connected now? Do we even have that trembling that we used to have in the presence of God? Before they raise a worship song, you know how your heart is connected. Today, if the worshiper, the person leading worship, well, they will activate you, they will motivate you, they will stimulate you, they will prime you, they will warn you, they will say, it's okay now, God will do it now, don't worry, your time will come now. After a long while, they will sing like seven songs on the eighth one, then you key in. Before, your heart is already prepared before you come to church. You are even already singing in the car. As you are entering, the atmosphere is filled with worship already. What has happened to our heart? The Lord is asking you today. You don't know your heart. You need God to help you. You need to ask God to help you. If they said David will ever kill an innocent man, you will say no. How will I touch the Lord's anointed? He speared him. If they told David that one day you will kill an innocent man, he stage managed the death of Uriah. He killed him, put him in the face of the battle. What a desperate heart. What a wicked heart. Listen. They came back, they told him, impregnated Bathsheba. Bathsheba had a son. The son died. David went again. <laughs> David, David, after killing Uriah, took Bathsheba. The first son died. He did not stop there. He continued. What a heart. The Solomon did very well. He started well. Started well. Ooh, did you ever know the same person that gave 1,000 burnt offering to God? We also have 1,000 wives. For every one dollar he gave, he took one woman. 1,000 burnt off, 1,000 wives. The heart is wicked. I pray the enemy will not penetrate into your heart. Are you hearing me as I'm speaking? If you are hearing me, say, Lord, help my heart. Look at the scripture. You see people that are desperate. You see the heart of people that are wicked. The Bible recorded women eating their children. They didn't say men. Women doing what? They there was famine. They didn't say, okay, let's eat one another. We are adults. At least we have spent our years eating their children. Jacob tricked his brother. Cain killed Abel. You see the desperation. And that's why you should ask God to help you. What is it that we can do? Then we will pray. I want you to pay attention to this now. Number one, write this down. Write this down. Number one, align your heart. What did I say? What does alignment mean? Somebody tell me. To position something in relative to something else. That's the meaning of alignment. So what is it that you will align it against? The word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. The Bible says, But we all, with unveiled faces, building as in a mirror. Read with me. One, one to go. Building as in a mirror. The glory of God and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Every single day, you this is your mirror. Are you looking at me? Looking at me, you align your heart. 
you shift it to the left, shift it to the right, check it, check it. Don't joke with your devotion. Praise the Lord. Devotion is not old school. Huh? Having a devotional material. My friend, align your heart. Quiet time, devotion, prayer. No matter how busy you are, no matter the job that you are doing, it is not optional. You drop that veil, then you come before God. You come before the word of God. Then you adjust yourself. You adjust yourself. You check it to the right. You check it to the left. You see if it's okay. Remove the veil. Then you juxtapose the word of God with your life. Are you following me? That anger in you. By the time you are reading the scripture, you say, okay, ah, this anger is taking over me. You say, okay, ah, this one, I'm gradually, I'm just telling lies. I'm calling them white lies. Okay, this one, a thread is beginning to cover my heart. I'm taking offenses. Now I'm beginning to keep record of offenses. Because of the word that you are reading. Listen, my friend. The alignment of your heart is very, very important. Make sure you do this on daily basis. You know how many times you check the mirror every day. Amen? Do you check the mirror once a week? <laughs> no. Some of us, even after dressing up from home, as you are driving home, you are still using the mirror in the car. By the time you came out of your car, you still step out, you are still looking at the body of your car to check yourself. Am I right? <laughs> By the time you are coming in, you are still looking at a transparent glass of the church to check whether you are okay. Some as they are, are, are coming, they don't come straight to church. They go straight to where? To the washroom to check again if they are looking okay. After the praise worship, they say, I don't want to check whether my wig has shifted. Not to go and peel, just to go and check again. It may be funny, but listen, that's the way you align your heart. The word of God checking every time, checking every time. And you are checking on my muffler. Am I still wrapping it very well? The same way, check it. Is my life still okay? Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against. My friend, you will sin against him if you don't hide the word in your heart. You keep aligning it, aligning it, until you get it clear. Some of us are old enough to remember. You remember, you want your TV station to be clear. What do you do? Hey, some people they grew up with DSTV, so they don't understand what we're saying. <laughs> so listen, and you say, Oh, is it clear? Is it clear? No, is it clear? No, woe unto you the day you are alone at home and you want to watch soccer. That day you know you need a partner. <laughs> is it clear? Oh, yes, it's clear. Oh, yeah, 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 it's clear. It's clear. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Oh, you have shifted it again. That is how to align your Look for three people of your choice. Say, align your heart this week. <laughs> Let me tell you, every time you encounter the word of God, what are you doing? Align your heart. The Bible study on Thursday is not a waste. Hallelujah. The Sunday school, they thought this one it was not a waste. Align your heart. Make sure your heart is aligned. When you are in his presence, you check for haughtiness. He checks for pride. Oh, he checks. Oh, you used to love people more. Your passion, how you were passionate with God before. Check it, it's gone. You, before you are in the presence of your friends, you are the one that will instigate them to love God. But now your friend, they are playing worldly music. You don't want to be too holy. You just dance a little. They are drinking. You don't even say nothing. You know how your heart used to be before. You know what has happened. You know the worldliness that have taken over. The Lord is saying, give me your heart. Let me tell you one thing. Look at me, everybody. Listen to this. If you didn't hear anything, listen. Do you know that 90% of our prayers will be answered if our heart is properly aligned? Many times what is happening is that we are praying out of the will of God. Our heart is not aligned. What you are asking for is not in place. But when you are in his presence, the spirit of God is already speaking to you. Your heart is already clear. You already know what to do. Let me just take number two, then we we'll pray together. Please stand on your feet, everybody. Stand and get ready. What is number one? What should we do with our heart? Align our Say it as if you are ready to do it this week. Align number two heart. is to guard your heart. That's why we are talking about shade of faith this month. Number two, what should you do? Guard your heart. Let me tell your neighbor, say guard your heart. Guard your heart. It's so important you have to sentinel your heart. Shield it. The Bible says guard it with all diligence. Don't let any evil penetrate. 
children cartoon these days they are putting romance putting kissing talking about gay lesbian just looking for ways to penetrate into your heart and let me tell you one thing you must guard your heart from is offenses what did i say oh i can't hear you what did i say people will offend you but make sure you stay in love make sure you will guard your heart in spite of the evil they do to you you know the lord gave me a key he said anytime you offense comes to you just remember jesus compare the offense that came to you if it's up to jesus then you can think of it i read about stephen they were stoning him he was still saying father don't count it against them will you pray one minute and say father help my heart Father, help my heart. Pray one minute. Father, help my heart. Father, help my heart. Guard my heart from unbelief. Guard my heart from evil reports. If you can still make David your, a man after your heart, change my own heart, oh God. Create in me a new heart, oh God. Check the intent of my heart, oh God. desire to unshine others take it away from me this pride lack lack of compassion oh god check my heart I live for you alone. Psalm 139, 23, please. Lord, have your way. Psalm 139, verse 23, final scripture. Let's read together. You want to cry to God. Search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Verse 24. Let's read together. Put NLT of that 24. I like how it says it. And that will be your prayer point. You want to go? Point out anything in me that offends you. Pay attention, my friend. There is something that offends God in your heart. Please. Did you hear what I said? There is something that offends God in your heart. You want to ask God to do what? Point it out. Look at your screen. Point out anything in me that offends you. And what should you do? Lead me in the way everlasting. Amplified place. I pray that as you cry to God today, whatever that offends God, the Holy Spirit will shine His light and it will be adjusted. As your heart is aligned, you will receive your miracle. He says, See if there is any wicked or awful way in me and lead me in the everlasting can you now say father restore restore the zeal that i used to have restore the passion i used to have for prayers passion for souls passion passion give me an obedient heart Neman, man go and wash in the river he was proud he will have missed this miracle help me oh god to obey you to be a good and nice believer is not enough you need your heart to be right. I don't know what my heart is capable of. Help me. Help me. Search my heart. No. Any wicked way. Point it out to me, oh God. Have mercy. I must not be destroyed. Help me before I'm late for worship. You know how my heart is. I forgot to pay my tithe. You know how my heart is. I didn't preach throughout the week. You know how my heart is. But now, now, it's a different story. This shield of faith must guard, must guide every fiery dart of the enemy. I must not end in error. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.